My name is Yetan Partini. I'm a human factors specialist and I've been working in control room solutions for more than 10 years. I started to work in oil and gas industry in Norway and then uh, continued to work with other industrial fields such as uh, energy sector. I worked for mining sector. I worked for process based industries. I worked for assembling industries, worked for nuclears, uh, transportation, robotics, mainly everything that has to do with the control room. Uh, I started to work at CGM and CGM was a well-known company when it comes to the control room solutions. And CGM was uh, shortly after acquired by ABB and then I continued to work for ABB. Uh, since then, I've been involved in uh, different projects together with other companies. Uh, I worked uh, in projects with uh, other companies such as uh, ExxonMobil. I worked for um, BP, Dow Chemicals. I worked for uh, Statoil. I worked for uh, Vale, Volvo Groups. I worked for uh, Interpipeline in Canada, Fallon Energy, and so on and so forth. Uh, today, I have my own company called Human Factors Specialist, and I work with uh, Control Rooms uh, Design and Solution. I mainly consult for ABB, but of course for other companies as well. Uh, I do work with Control Room Solutions and everything that in includes uh, Control Room Solutions, such as uh, design layout for Control Rooms, uh, HMI, Human Machine Interaction or Human Machine Interface, Alarm Management, uh, I work with Function and Tasks, uh, I work with uh, control room risk assessment, I work with job organization, mainly everything that has to do with the control room. In this video, I will be talking about the standards that I use when it comes to control room solution and control rooms design. Just before doing it, uh, talking about the standards, it is very important for the plant or the company to identify the need. Why is the main reason that you are upgrading your control room? There could be uh, different reasons or several, several reasons to it. Uh, one could be you want to increase the level of automation. Uh, the other one could be you want simply to, to attract the young generation into your control room, or you want to centralize several control rooms to one control center. And if, for instance, if you if you want to increase the level of automation, then it's very, very good to map the knowledge that you have among the operators today and to, to see if there is a gap uh, on the knowledge after you uh, upgrade to the next level of automation. Because I have seen horrific uh, scenarios where the plant did upgrade the level of automation and then suddenly the operators could, couldn't run properly the plant because they didn't have uh, enough knowledge to run the new level of automation on that plant. If the reason uh, is to, uh, uh, to simply uh, attract the young generation into your control room, then uh, you probably should work with the gamification methods in order to gamify the process that you have on your, on your plant. And then in that way, you probably will uh, attract the young generation into your control room. Uh, if, if the reason is to centralize several control rooms, then there are two major areas that you have to focus. The first one is cybersecurity. It's not going to be part of this presentation, but however, it's worth mentioning. And the second one is the tacit knowledge. Tacit knowledge, in my point of view, is very important. So you don't lose that uh, when you centralize to the new control center. Uh, the tacit knowledge is a knowledge that usually operators uh, gain or get throughout the years that they work near the process. Uh, you, since you often have the control room near the process itself and that uh, the operators gain this kind of knowledge. And this knowledge uh, could be everything from sound, uh, like vibration, uh, or it is a smell that they, they it, I, I mean, the operators could identify if there is anything wrong in the, in the process throughout the tacit knowledge. So it's very good to map somehow register this knowledge and then forward to the to the op operators that would work or to the control center uh, together with the operators that would work in that control center. Uh, that is very, very important. So as I said, uh, upgrading or building a new control room is a complexity in itself. And then you have to address uh, some of the aspects of the human factors in order to achieve a good uh, result. 
so those aspects could be everything from the ergonomic principles. That could be a design specification, a function identification, function allocation. Because you 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 through uh, throughout this uh, process, you can identify the functions that could be. Uh, repetitive and then you can of course allocate those function to the DCS uh, system uh, or 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 simply you'll you'll have to identify and see if if there is a possible to allocate those uh, functions uh, or not uh, at the same time you could conduct situation analysis task analysis job design and user identification and so on and so forth uh, what, why did I make, make this design specification on the bold uh, text here? It's because I have seen throughout the years of working with the control room, I have seen companies turning to the design companies. And uh, first of all, what they do is designing the uh, control room itself. And uh, in my point of view, uh, you should involve the human factor specialist early in the stage uh, and do the job prior to the design itself because function uh, function identification function allocation situation analysis task analysis job design user identification if you're going to have the, uh, who's going to be the primary user secondary users and, and and so on and so forth you should do this prior to the design itself otherwise you will end up with a beautiful design and unfortunately beautiful is not always functional you need a functional first of all, and then beautiful as well, a control room or control center or a control suite. In order to pre perform all this complexity, you need a, a, to, to apply a human-centered design approach. And uh, that kind of application of human-centered design approach is a combination of humans working with machine in organ organizational context. In order to do that, you need a design process as well, which I think ISO 11064 does have. It's, it has a, a wonderful design process, and that's why, in my point of view, this uh, uh, this standard uh, distinguishes from all the uh, whole other standards out there when it comes to control room. It has a iterative process uh, that involves all the end users uh, throughout the process itself. At the same time, you need a validation and verification process, which often companies doesn't use after building the control room or upgrading the control room, control suite or a control center. And this uh, process, in my point of view, is very important since you validate and verify to ensure that you have achieved the requirements or specifics uh, that you wanted to, to achieve from the beginning. I, I mean, you fulfill the intent that you had with your control room, control suite or control center. One thing to keep in mind is that standards are only the minimum requirements for everything we build. So you need experienced multidisciplinary team to work with the upgrading of control room or building a control room. It's not enough only the standards. You need experience as well in this uh, in this subject. How does it look around the uh, Europe and around the world? I'll talk about the Europe. You have ISO 11064. It has become a main standard in Europe. Uh, uh, at the same time, I, I just wanted to show you in this uh, presentation that you have some countries that they use their own standards as well. Uh, for instance, in Norway, you have Nurshok as 002 that of course also Nurshok refers to ISO 11064. You have EMUA in United Kingdom and Ireland, EMUA 201, that, is also, uh, that also refers to ISO 11064. But uh, ISO 11064 has become the main uh, standard for the industry when it comes to the control room solution control, uh, or control rooms design. How does it look in the United States? Yes, in the United States, uh, it's also, the United States is also using uh, ISO 11064. They do have some other standards as well. They do have ANSI HFS 100-2007, ANSI is uh, American National Standard Institute, and this standard addresses the needs of uh, daily work. It's not 24-7 uh, working environment recommendations that you get from it. But however, it's a good standard. It's, uh, it's, it's smaller than ISO 11064, but it does have some good recommendations on it. Other standard that they use mainly in the nuclear en energy is the NUREG. NUREG is a pretty old standard and it started with the Atomic Energy Act in 1946. It's a huge standard and it's well known in the nuclear energy. And they do use this for the control rooms or control centers as well. But ISO, it's becoming more popular now even in that industry. All the other industries uh, such as process-based industries 
uh, transportation, mining and so on, they are uh, more or less using ISO 11064. And why is this standard the best one that I, that I think in, in this field? Well, it does cover all the parts that you need uh, to work with uh, for upgrading or building a new control room. And in my point of view, uh, this uh, why this is standard, it's, it's, it's very, very uh, used or very popular. It's because of the design process that we have on the part one. As you can see here, here you have uh, on this part, uh, as it's called uh, principles for the design of control center, you do have the design process of ISO 11064 that I talked a bit earlier, and I will talk a bit uh, more later on. But uh, it, as I said before, some companies, they do believe that this is a huge standard and probably they don't need, uh, and it depends what you are doing, of course. But uh, to, uh, in my point of view, you can cherry pick on this standard as well in order to, to have a very, uh, very good and functional first of all, control room that you need or control center or control suite. On the part two of this uh, standard, you have principles for the design of the control suite itself, uh, where you um, where you have the recommendation about the location and what you should think about it, uh, function and tasks, access, I mean, users access, if you have a primary user, secondary user, and so on, requirements for a task zone, and so on and so forth. On the part three of this uh, standard, you have the control room layout that uh, mainly uh, gives you recommendations for the control room itself. Uh, gives you recommendation on entrances, exits, uh, if you're gonna have a future expansion, uh, a recommendation on the communication itself, uh, if it is internal between the operators and shift supervisors and maintenance and all the communication that occurs inside the control room between the operators. Uh, and the external uh, communication as well as usually you have with the com radius, uh, uh, telephone or mobile phone, uh, and so on. Workstation arrangement is also part of this uh, of, of, of those recommendations. Circulation of the personnel and maintenance uh, access inside the control room itself. Part four is the layout and dimension of the control station, and uh, this uh, has to do only with the control uh, with the workstation itself and everything that is included in that workstation. Some other uh, recommendations to mention are, the, for, instance, for instance, the uh, dimension of, of the displays, uh, controls, line of sight, visual angle, visual field, physical constraints, and so on and so forth. On the part five, you have the displays and controls, as we call it, uh, human machine interaction or human machine interface. And uh, in this part, um, you do have some recommendation about the symbols that you're going to use, uh, how to place the alarm management in those uh, uh, human machine interfaces and so on. Uh, yes, I think that there are some better standards, ISO standards for this, uh, for when it comes to the uh, human machine interaction or HMI. But uh, it depends what you are doing, of course, but this standard could cover more or less, uh, it could be enough for what for the purpose of the work that you are doing. I mean, if it's not a huge upgrade that you are going to do on the HMI of the, of the DCS system or the other systems that you are working with. On the part six, we have environmental requirements for control room. And here you have uh, lighting uh, requ uh, recommendations, uh, uh, acoustic uh, recommendation, vibration, air quality, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, this standard is also, I mean, to most of the work that I've done, this standard has been enough. But uh, from time to time, you may need uh, other standards in order to approve uh, specific uh, environmental re environmental requirements it depends what you are doing I mean some uh, control rooms were located near near the turbines and then you you had to work very much with acoustics in order to reduce that level of acoustics sometimes you you had a um, uh, control rooms that wanted to focus on the lighting and then you could use other standards as well um, in my point of view ISO 11 ISO 8995 part 1. It's a very good standard when it comes to the lighting, indoor lighting, uh, but it's a huge uh, standard that were, uh, only uh, tackles this, uh, the lighting issue though in, inside the control room. Uh, but in my point of view, part six, it's enough for most of the control rooms or control suite or control centers that you are going to upgrade. And here we go, 
last but not least, we have the part seven, which is the validation and verification process. This is, in my point of view, very important uh, part of the ISO 11064 that not unfortunately uh, always, always is used after building a, a control room or control center. Uh, and uh, this is very good because you have you 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 should verify the the, the plan, uh, or you should very uh, validate and verify the scope of work. Uh, should, should validate and ver verify the criteria. Mainly everything that you have done to see if you have uh, achieved that uh, result uh, that you 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 wanted to achieve from the beginning. Uh, some countries do use some other standards or methodologies as well. For instance, in Nordic countries, you have a cryop methodology. Is very much used, and uh, that cryop methodology is is scenario based methodology that you uh, uh, verify and validate the the criteria of the control room that you have built. And what is the difference between between control center, control uh, room, and control suite? Uh, you do have the definitions. Uh, the definition in, in this standard and uh, when it is a control center you have a subsystems you have a facilities nearby and then you have a control room itself uh, control suite it's simply the facilities and the control room it itself I mean facilities nearby the control room and then you have a control room itself why it's important to, to define uh, the control, uh, control room control center or control suite uh, sometimes it's important because you you some you you very uh, easy can identify the scope of work that you are going to uh, to work with in order to upgrade your control room or a control suite or, or a control center. So it's very good to know um, for I mean prior to that if it's going if you are going to upgrade the control room and when you talk to human factors they know that okay it it has everything to do with the control room itself and the scope of work. Probably it's not that big, even though it's very hard to define. For sometimes uh, I've been working with a uh, with a control room more more than a, a control suite or a control center, and vice versa. It depends how deep the pre study is going to be and things like that, and so on and so forth. But at least you have a definition here in the ISO eleven sixty four. So uh, uh, somehow you you get an idea of the scope of work that you are going to work with. And here we go to the best part of it, which I think uh, it's in, in this uh, ISO 11064, in this standard. Uh, first of all, we have to understand that standard is divided in two uh, main areas. You have the recommendations and you have the design process of it. Recommendations, in my point of view, uh, sometimes tend to be old because it takes time for ISO to upgrade the standard. Uh, but still, they are very good uh, recommendations as well. Uh, I mean, you have uh, recommendations for floor and ceiling, temperatures recommendation, minimum working area requirements, and so on and so forth. Uh, but for instance, in the lighting, I don't know if they have upgraded or not, but when it comes to the lighting, they had a measurements recommendation on LUX, which today uh, more, or more or less uh, all kind of uh, control all control rooms are using a LED system and avoiding LUX uh, measurement system in their control rooms. Uh, and that's why I think sometimes their recommendations can become uh, old, but there are some of the recommendations very good. And from time to time, ISO does upgrade the standards. So uh, in order to fulfill the, uh, the need, technological need that we have in the industrial field. Uh, back to the design process, I think it's a wonderful design process uh, that distinguishes this standard with all other standards out there. And uh, first of all, uh, during the, I mean, applying this standard, you create a multidisciplinary team or design team that works with the control room uh, upgrade. And uh, the, why is this important? Because this standard ensures the participation of, uh, uh, of uh, end users throughout the design process. That's why I think this standard is very, very good. And how does this standard look like? Uh, it has five different phases. It has a clarification phase, analysis phase, conceptual design, detailed design, and iteration or a feedback process. On the clarification phase, uh, you usually gather the data, and this often you do by uh, going on site, visiting the control room, observing the control room, uh, uh, and, uh, and using data gathering methods such as uh, workshops, focus groups, interviews, uh, mail, uh, Microsoft Teams, and so on and so forth. 
uh, and you uh, you sit <coughs> uh, together with operators in o- in order to to see what is the current uh, situation uh, on the control room and how could we improve. But the main focus should be on gathering the data, not uh, making an analysis. So this is uh, mainly this phase uh, is focused on the data gathering, uh, not on on the other steps. I have seen to my in my experience in uh, during the the years that I worked with the control rooms design some industrial companies they want in this process to start designing the control room which in my point of view it has to be the last thing you have to do for because uh, uh, you 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 need to have uh, uh, you ha- you need to have data and a situation uh, and a current situation analysis in order to to create something that it, it is useful when you create when you gather the data you go into the next level uh, or uh, next phase of uh, of the design uh, process and that is uh, analysis you gather the data you do analysis on the data that you have gathered and then you you address uh, all the standards that you are working with in my case often with ISO 11064 see the guide, uh, guidelines that the, the company has because sometimes you have a guidelines as well in the inside the company that you have to fulfill uh, see the recommendations that may have you have to talk with uni- unions and uh, all the personals that do have recommendation uh, recommendations for the upcoming upgrade so it's very good to, to uh, address those recommendations as well and then when you have analyzed this kind of data you go into the uh, third phase that is a conceptual design and in conceptual design, you create a prototype uh, from the data that you have gathered and the analysis that you have done. And this prototype you show to the customers uh, from the different, I mean, you can use uh, 2D graphics or 3D graphics or uh, AR or VR format or whatever it is. And then you go through the iteration process together with the end user in order to tweak this uh, design and create a detailed design that is a final design. Uh, for the in, for that uh, upgrade that you are going to do, and throughout all of these phases, you have iteration for uh, iteration process or iteration uh, phase, and that's why I think this standard is very very good because it it, it, in, it involves all the end users, and at the same time of the analysis phase, you have to use the recommendations that are part of this standard as well, and this is the main reason why I think this standard is very very good comparing to all other standards. And yes, I know, it is a big standard, but uh, it's a good standard as well. Here we go. The in uh, here we're going to talk about the uh, indus- industrial trends that we have today, and something to keep in mind, which I talked in the beginning, but uh, I'll, I'll come back here too. It's uh, the tacit knowledge. Uh, here you have the operator operating the plant near the plant and here you, they gather a lot of uh, tacit knowledge and information about the plant itself. They know more or less everything that is going on on the plant. And today, the, thanks to the Industry 4.0 or Internet of Things, uh, you have possibility to run the processes uh, remotely. You don't have to be nearby pro- nearby. Uh, process itself as you can see it here I mean you can run processes uh, remotely in a collaboration center or a remote center but at the same time you should identify the risks so you don't build the latent uh, latent risks on the on the control center uh, and and you can avoid that by the identi- identifying the functions to see what are the critical functions that you uh, uh, you have to address and make a risk assessment and see the impact of it and how how you should uh, solve those uh, problems that you may they, that may occur if you're sitting at the control center because you are not going to to be near the process and you are not going to have the tacit knowledge. I mean, in form of the sound, in form of the smell, or a vibration near the process that you usually have. Uh, at the same time, as I said before, here you have to think about the. Uh, Cybersecurity as well, but it's a, it's a something that uh, more or less IT sector should deal with it. But it's a very very important aspects to think about it when centralizing the control center. 
So back to the ISO, yes, I do think that this is the best standard and this is the standard that I uh, mostly use in a control room design, control room solutions, and I think it covers everything. That's why I think this standard is very good as I, as I went uh, through it, uh, each uh, part of it in the previous uh, slides. Uh, I think that if you are going to use this standard, it's well enough for most of the control rooms upgrade uh, that I have seen uh, out there and it's often more than enough sometimes it's it's too big but at least you can cherry pick whatever you need from this standard uh, one thing that you should think about it as i said earlier in, in the beginning is that uh, often i have seen uh, industrial companies uh, focusing on the control room design which is uh, it's very good but control room design should be the end of the process, not the beginning of the process that uh, some companies uh, have done it and they end up uh, with a beautiful control room, but uh, beautiful is not always functional. Uh, and it, you have to keep in mind that, the, that uh, there is more to the control room uh, uh, solutions than only control rooms design. You have HMI, you have alarm management, you have uh, risk assessment if you identify the functions that are uh, fulfilled with the risks then you have to do a risk assessment and see the impact of it. Uh, you have to pre, uh, pre conduct or perform function and task analysis, uh, see the workload and workflow, and so on and so forth. So don't end up just doing a control room design. You need, prior to that, you need all other uh, fields as well as you have HMI and alarm management and all of these fields that you are seeing here. And here we have come to the end of this uh, presentation uh, and uh, what the, lesson, the lessons learned, what we have done so far. And uh, first of all, as I said, uh, whatever you do on upgrading the control room, control center or control suite or building a new one, you, ha you have to identify the need. What is the need? Is it to upgrade, upgrade the level of automation? automation level, is it that you want to attract the young generation or is it that you want to centralize several control rooms to one control center. And uh, whatever you do, keep in mind that health and safety is the objective when upgrading the control room or control center or control suite. Since the, this objective is to design adequate working conditions with regard to human safety, health and well-being. Uh, this is very important because ending up with any uh, accident, it's not fun at all, and uh, the result could be devastated. Last but not least, beautiful, it's not functional, and this is why I'm repeating it since I have seen beautiful uh, control rooms that simply, uh, simply <laughs> were not functional. I mean, for instance, I have seen a control room where they build uh, the, uh, the toilet on the second floor, and the control room itself was in the first, for, uh, first floor. And imagine having one operators to run there and something is happening and when uh, I, uh, abnormal situations uh, occur into the control room, uh, I mean, our uh, we are built like that uh, biologically. You need to go to the toilet very often because of the stress level you get. And then you have to leave on that uh, emergency situation, you have to leave the control room and go to the second floor to use the bathroom. So that's why it was a beautiful control room, but uh, not functional and, and for a simple things. I mean, that's why in this case it's a simple, but it could be far more important function uh, functions that you had to identify prior to the beautiful design itself. So be aware of it. Do not end up with the beautiful design, but uh, try to achieve a functional and beautiful design as well. And this you can do by applying human factors. Uh, aspects during the upgrade of your control room, control suite, or a control center. Hi again. This was all that I wanted to show to you today regarding the standards to use in control room solution. I know that there is more, and if you have any questions or you are thinking to upgrade your control room or control center or a control suite, please do not hesitate to contact me. You have the information on the screen, and of course, I'll help you as much as I can. Stay tuned because from time to time I will release this kind of uh, videos regarding the control room solution and control rooms de uh, design. Thank you very much.